Hi, it's Rob Bryant, and welcome back once again. Rob as a floating head. And uh, what we're doing uh, in this uh, series of uh, five videos is talking about the poll questions that happen at 10thdimension.com slash blog. And uh, today's entry uh, is called Why Stop at 10 Dimensions? It's dated November 2nd, 2008. And uh, this poll question, which ended in September 6, 2008, uh, was Why Stop at 10? There are really an infinite number of dimensions, and we asked whether people agreed or disagreed. And as you can see, it was a dead heat. 50% agreed, 50% disagreed. Now this is probably one of those polls that could have used an I don't know option. Because until confirmed evidence comes forward to prove that anything more than the third or fourth dimension is real, how can any of us say for sure? Uh, now think about the phrase, it's turtles all the way down. After that, it's turtles all the way down. Just Google that, because that's what we're talking about right now. No matter how many dimensions we care to imagine, I believe there needs to be an ultimate state that, in the sense that Gödel's incompleteness theorem, theorem uses the phrase, is outside the system. Otherwise, you're stuck in endless repetitions, because no matter where you stop, someone can then ask, but where did that come from? And the phrase turtles all the way down then comes from a story demonstrating this concept of infinite regression, which is one of the ways of thinking about infinity. Ah, infinity. This is one of the questions that comes up sometimes after people watch my animation about visualizing the dimensions. Infinity is one of those words, like universe, that seems to have a contradiction built into its definition. How can there be more than one universe when the word was intended to, to define all that there is? Likewise, how can there be more than one infinity? Infinity. How can there be infinite divisions between 0 and 1? An infinite set of numbers from the sequence starting 1, 2, 3, and yet another infinite set of numbers from the sequence starting 2, 4, 6, 8. I've come to love the phrase, there are many roads to infinity. In my blog entry, Infinity and the Boltzmann Brains, I talked about the idea my friend Michael from Norway it reminded me about parallel lines meet at infinity. This is more than just a useful device for drawing pictures in proper perspective. This is what really happens. Two parallel lines meet at infinity, and not just once, but in either direction. And this is where I've pointed to the work of physicist Sean Carroll, who a few months ago in Scientific American advanced a very similar idea. Time makes sense in either direction. And once you get outside time, you're in the same enfolded symmetry state that some call the omniverse, which would be the same both before the Big Bang and after the end of the universe. So what it all comes down to is that with the way of visualizing the dimensions we're talking about here, every single dimension extends to infinity within its own set of possibilities. The first dimensional line, travels to infinity in both directions. The second dimensional plane, infinite in four directions, and so on, all the way up. As with turtles all the way down, some people argue that you could keep adding dimensions forever until you reach an infinite number of dimensions, at which points you've reached the same idea that I'm talking about. Those infinite dimensions, viewed as a whole, would be the thing that just is, the thing that is outside the system. We've talked in my book and in this blog about physicist Juan Maltesina's theory that our universe is really a hologram. I believe this concept is easily imagined within the construct. Because every single dimension already extends to infinity, the idea that each point you observe contains or is connected to the whole is already in there. Here's what it comes down to for me. Whether you believe there are three dimensions, four, seven, ten, twenty-six, or even an infinite number of dimensions, at the place you stop, you need to be able to say, now I have defined the background state from which everything else is derived. For me, my way of, the visual of visualizing the dimensions achieves this at the tenth dimension. But regardless of what you prefer to call it, what we're talking about here is the underlying unobserved fabric from which we can generate all other possible expressions of matter, energy, and information. And Gavin Gerbrand called it timelessness. The point of indeterminate size, then, becomes an amazingly powerful idea, because no matter where you place that point, and no matter what dimension you place that point within, it is at the center of infinity. 
Here's a way to think about that idea. No matter where you place a point on an infinite line, there are values extending to infinity and negative infinity in either direction, which cancel each other out. In other words, all of those possible values on either side of that point always add up to zero. Which gets back to the dangerous idea of zero. When you add every possibility for reality together, what does it add up to? Zero. All states enfold together. And our universe doesn't spring from nothing, it springs from everything. As Kevin Gerbrand liked to say, the zero, the enfolded symmetry state that is outside the system, is the pie. And our universe is a tiny slice of that pie. And that's a powerful idea. That's all for today from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. My name is Rob Bryanson. Enjoy the journey.